Hello, my name is Matej. I'm a senior product designer on the Grove Group here at GitLab. And today I'm reviewing the user onboarding experience as a part of the UX department's initiative for more holistic and proactive approach to improving the GitLab's user experience. And this is all a part of the UX scorecard work where we map and analyze the current user journey, grade the experience, uh, video doc document its flow, and in the end come up with rec recommendations for improvements. In this particular case, we want to show the value of GitLab to newly signed up users that are completely new to our product. In fact, the job to be done that we put together as part of improving this flow is when I sign up for a GitLab account, I want to see what are its main features and benefits for my role or team so I can find out if it's potentially valuable to our company. I have now mapped and analyzed the user's journey and graded the experience. I initially wanted to grade this experience uh, with the grade C, but after I gave it another thought, I realized that it's actually between C and D, so I ended up grading it with a C minus. So what does this actually mean? If we look at our grading rubric, we can see that C is supposed to be like an average experience, a workflow that needs improvements. When D is presentable, work, workflow has clear issues and should have not gone into production without more thought and testing. And if we look at frustration levels between C and D, for C it's medium and D it's high. And task completion for C is supposed to be successful but with unnecessary steps. And for D, it's unlikely, but there may be a chance that there is a completion. So I feel this experience lies exactly between these two grades because it's sometimes unlikely that a user will sign up for GitLab and find the exact value that they are looking for from this product. At least in their very first experience with GitLab, which is exactly what we're aiming for here with this new user onboarding experience. Okay, so let's go through the uh, flow of signing up for GitLab and then the onboarding as it is right now. And I'll start off on the homepage and go straight for register. I'll pick a username. I'll use a temporary email. Just for this. Sure, use a strong password. Accept the terms. Register. Okay, so I need to confirm my email and it's asking me for my full name and my role. Product designer, there it is. Get started. Okay, so this is where I landed right after the registration. And I'm seeing a lot of things on this screen. It's still asking me to confirm my email, but I guess it's not something that I need to do right now. It's not urgent. Uh, then I'm presented with a free trial of gitlab.com gold and an option to start my trial, as well as the welcome to GitLab part and four options on this screen. Uh, now, I'm, I've been with GitLab for a while, I know what the difference between a project and a group is, but the recent feedback that we received from users uh, indicated that most of them in these beginning stages of their experience with GitLab, they don't really understand what the difference between a project and a group is. Um, so it's probably unclear at this point exactly what the next step should be and we do offer 
some explanations, but still there are four main options on this screen and two of them are actually, two, two of these bottom options uh, are actually accessible to everyone. You don't need to sign up for GitLab to explore our public projects or learn more about GitLab, which is basically GitLab's documentation. Uh, so we should find a better way to introduce the new newly signed up users to GitLab, what a group is, what a project is, what's the difference and what should be their next step in getting started with uh, GitLab. Based on the data we have so far, we know that uh, most of the users that sign up for a GitLab.com account create a project straight after that. So I will go down this route today as well and try to simulate what the experience of the GitLab's onboarding is at the moment. So it's asking me to name my project, uh, let's say onboarding project, let's keep it private and go and create a project. Okay, so I created a project and again, we have a lot of alerts showing up in various colors. One is orange, one is blue, and another one is a different shade of orange, sort of yellowish. Um, and I'm also presented with a lot of information on how to get started with an empty project. As it seems, I can start by adding new files or add standard files to a repository. I can even go ahead and clone it, uh, but I, it doesn't really make sense right now as it's empty and I haven't done any setup on it just yet. At this point, it's also becoming quite obvious that there's a general lack of guidance for user, users uh, and they need to figure out how to use GitLab by themselves. Um, and we can also see that there's a lack of focus uh, because flows are full of distractions. Uh, the alerts on this page are just an example and in the previous page where we were asked to either create a project or a group, there were four options, but of course there must be one main option that, that we should take uh, that would guide us towards getting some value out of GitLab. And I also, in, while I was signing up for GitLab, I told that I'm a product designer, I filled that information in. So I would expect that that information gets used somehow to shape a more tailored experience that would tell me this is what value you can get out of GitLab. Uh, but let's say for a moment that I'm a DevOps engineer and wanted to see how GitLab CI works. Uh, I don't want to go through a complete project setting up uh, the CI, pushing some code, creating a merge request, just to see one of the main benefits of GitLab. It could take me at least an hour, if not more, uh, to do just that. And at this point, I'm just kind of browsing through the product. Uh, I'm not even sure if it's something useful. I don't think I'm willing to invest that much time uh, in a product that I barely know. I would expect to be shown the main benefits in just a couple of minutes in whatever format. Um, so yeah, most users end up creating a project. Uh, that's what we know so far. And we can even try to go and set up the CI CD and we even have the option to choose from a template. Let's choose something basic for this. Even if it's just plain HTML, we can go ahead, commit the changes and we will have something in place. But is it enough for me to see, you know, what kind of value I can get out of this, uh, it doesn't. It's I've, it's at this point it's very unlikely 
that the users will get to an aha moment, as we call them, by themselves. And these aha moments are, you know, that point where they realize, huh, okay, this is what I can get out of using GitLab. Um, and how it can benefit their work. Okay, we can see now that the pipeline has now failed. We can go in quickly and inspect what happened. Uh, but it's again, it's not adding anything to my experience to learning more about GitLab. So the best what I can do is try to go and create an issue or try committing some code, setting up some basics of the project. But eventually I would, I am most likely to drop off at some point. So this is the user onboarding flow as it is right now. There's no guidance for the user and that's exactly what we're trying to fix with this work. Uh, I'll add the links to the relevant issues and handbook pages in the description so that you can follow the progress of this work. We intend to identify the right approach and the improvements to this flow in the next month or so. And hope, hopefully we'll be able to actually introduce these improvements shortly after. Thanks for watching. Bye.